Wow, and I thought Lily and Amity were a wasted opportunity. Shut up. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about disenchantment. Or more specifically, Cloyd and the Enchantress, aka Becky. Rebecca. I go by Rebecca now. I talk about cartoons all the time on this channel, and a constant criticism I bring up is wasted opportunities. Basically, it means the writers could have gone for, or touched on something juicy, but for one reason or another, they just didn't. Like, it was a wasted opportunity, Dagmar is such a vague villain. Oh, no, 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 too vague, much too vague, mommy's fault. I meant you'll have to look around a bit. Or it's a wasted opportunity that Una's entire character arc takes up a single episode. I realize I could not only sing holding me down. Maybe time constraints were to blame. Maybe the writers felt that wasn't the right direction. Or maybe they just didn't consider it. But for whatever reason, we have wasted opportunities. In my opinion, this show's biggest waste is Cloyd and Becky. These two are probably the biggest disappointments for me. At one point, they were some of my favorite characters. Obviously not my all-time favorite, but I loved how they would bicker like an old married couple. A cow. It's fire, Cloyd. It's hot. I know. I was there. No joke, these two were the only reason I got to be in Reviving Dagmar. Up until that episode, I watched this show only because it was a macaroni cartoon. I was honestly really bored. But thanks to them, I kept watching. Then it all clicked together and it just felt worth it. Come season two... Ow. But what's so bad about them? Well, let's discuss. At the beginning of the show, we know little about these two. We only find out a few things. 1. They sent Lucy to Bean as a wedding present. For some reason, but mostly in order to corrupt Bean. So the demonic binding begins. Yes, our emissary will steer her towards the darkness. Cool concept, but there is a problem with this. I talked about it in my Lucy video. In short, Lucy could have been a cool character, but he forgets his purpose, and honestly, does Lucy really need to do that much? Maybe it's just early installment weirdness, but I didn't think Bean was all that pure. In the pilot, she takes her top off in front of the royal court. As you wish, father. Anyways, they're so focused on Bean for another reason. Bean is somehow important to them. We don't know how, just that they want Bean. In fact, we know next to nothing about them. Besides, they spy on Dreamland with their magic. They want to take the kingdom down, and they want Bean. The only reveal in part one is they're located in Maru, and they're somehow connected to Dagmar. Heck, we don't even know Becky's name until season two. Until then, she's just the Enchantress. That whole time, I didn't know they were siblings. I just thought she was this woman Cloyd hired. It's why she gets away with talking back to him. Then comes Dreamland Falls. This kingdom is under attack by a ruthless enemy who will stop at nothing. My wife! Bean learns she has power within, and Dagmar takes her somewhere with troll creatures in tow. One hiatus later, and part two gets released. I don't know if I said it yet, but part two is probably my least favorite season. At first, it was awesome. It felt like the show finally hit Cerebus Syndrome. But it was a huge letdown. In a nutshell, season two felt like a season crammed into three episodes. What should have been a season-long plotline with smaller subplots was over before it even started. I plan to make a video on the problems of part two, but in the meantime, I recommend you watch the Roundtables video. The first three episodes alone, the premiere is probably the worst, and Cloyd and Becky immensely contribute. In The Disenchantress, Dagmar and Bean end up in Maru, where Bean finally comes face to face with Cloyd and Becky. Oh, glorious day. Welcome back. Turns out the two are Dagmar's siblings, but whereas Dagmar is adept at spells and magic, they leave a lot to be desired. Oh, please. Cloyd and Becky can't even mix a fruit cocktail, let alone a formula as complex as this. Now, this episode has a lot of issues. First off, this episode really dumbs down Bean to get to the inevitable reveal. This is the same stuff they used on Dreamland. I don't think it was Una. I think it was Cloyd and Becky. Corn nuts. It's like she drank a gallon of bleach. It takes Bean until the middle of the episode to realize something might be wrong with Maru. If you don't understand, let me explain. Big Joe told her Maru turned Cremora into stone. Maru flooded Cremora with the potion, and the residents were instantly turned to stone. Dreamland got turned to stone. Dagmar got turned to stone. She can't put two and two together. I can get her thinking Dagmar didn't do it, but she doesn't question much anything else, besides the creepy old lady. Save Maru, dear Beanie. Save Maru. Ah, get away from me! Ow! 
Second, the episode kind of ruins Cloyd and Becky's character. Sorry, characters? What made them so great was how suspenseful they were. We knew next to nothing about them, but they were still intriguing because you know that thanks to these two, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. You were willing to put up with horrible episodes. She risked her own life to save the demon. Remarkable. She's come along faster than we ever dared dream. In part two, froze that out to make it a trillion times more obvious they're deceiving Bean. You're free to explore. Cool. What's behind that door? None of your business, Nosy. In universe, it seems like Chloe and Becky went from super interesting Night Templars to Saturday morning villains. Right, you stay here and finish beating yourself. Ow, 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 ow,
But here's the thing. When you make things up as you go along, and you don't follow the plot points you set up, you get a Jenga tower of problems. Like season 4 of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Disenchantment, at its worst, feels like Star vs. Because you can really sense that while they might have planned some stuff out, they didn't have any contingencies or know how to get there. Have you seen the Book of Mormon, or more specifically the opener to the second act? That's what happens when you make things up as you go along, you're not keeping track of what you said or implied. Next is the Secret Society, who the show admitted was made up on the fly. While some of the plot seems like they're thinking of it on the fly, there's obviously something deeper they've planned all along. Floyd and Becky were definitely made up as they went along. I wouldn't be surprised if at first, they just wanted Bean for something. And they just happened to be connected to Dagmar. You want to see the evidence? I have it. It's Jerry. In season two, the most notable feature about him were his head scar things. Let me ask you to look at Jerry in his first appearance. The Princess of Darkness. No scars there. He has them in the limits of immortality, but not at any point before that. And we see him full body, so it definitely wasn't an animation error. I think at first, Jerry wasn't supposed to be a prince. He was just a normal servant Cloyd and Becky abused. But as time went on, they finally found a use for him. As for Cloyd and Becky, I think their purpose was to be overarching, but once they started to figure out the nitty gritty, the pair got pushed to the side. It's kind of unfortunate, but again, we always had part four. Join me next week when I delve more into the prophecy. I was gonna do it here, but this video was long enough. Anyways, thanks for watching and happy Memorial Day, guys.